Vegas jury convicts war machine of 29 counts. Uh, Copenhaver as his original last name before he officially changed it to War Machine, uh, rising in the UFC to a 14 and 5 record. Last fought in 2013, has been on trial now for an extended period of time with a lot of testimony, a lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, almost aside from an OJ esque twist at the end to be cleared of 29 counts of anything, I think there was 36 total charges. Um, and I can throw an image in post uh, that shows all 36 charges. And there are no jokes to go with this one. I just can't imagine him sitting there thinking that he was possibly going to get away with yeah. if it's like 0 for 1, 0 for 2. Am I going to get 36 of these charges wiped? No. Uh, so convicted on 29 counts, he's likely serving a life sentence. Uh, the jury was deadlocked on two counts of attempted murder, though. And that falls back on a story that has to do with his ex-girlfriend who was an adult film star, a porn star, if you will. Um and then retired porn star when she was with him back and forth. It's actually what led to some of the issues. On the other side of it though, uh, I'm just gonna read you some quotes from the ESPN uh, article and then I gotta find everybody for the comment section below Dan Wetzel's piece. Um, I don't think there's anybody better. Um, and Jay Adande said the same thing yesterday on Twitter. When it comes to a trial and athletes, then Dan Wetzel. Yeah. The guy's just a phenomenal writer. Um, and he works for Yahoo Sports. So shout out to Dan Wetzel. So, uh, as the Associated Press point out, they don't normally identify people who say they are a victim of sexual assault, but Mac gave the AP permission to use her name. Mac is his ex-girlfriend and the victim in the situation. Neither she nor Thomas was in the courtroom while Copenhaver, aka War Machine, who's 35 years old, stood flanked by his lawyer. He folded his arms across his chest as the verdicts were read. To give you some scene, he said he's a tough guy. He stood there and took the verdicts, but it's obviously the worst day of his life. I mean, I, yes, obviously it's pretty standard. Um, and then I wanted to get to the point where they get to the story. So. Uh, Mac, who's 24 years old, spent eight hours in the witness stand crying. She said she was beaten and raped by Copenhaver several times in the months before the August 2014 attack on her and Thomas. So that's what, what some of these charges were attempted rape, rape charges, assault, domestic violence, all of these. Uh, and then that led up to this incident. Thomas, a digital media company owner, testified that he dated Mac for two months before War Machine arrived at her home unexpectedly, flipping on the bedroom lights and set upon him on the bed with rapid fire punches and choking. Thomas testified that he suffered a broken nose, dislocated shoulder, scraps, bruised bite, bite marks. The beating only stopped because he asked War Machine if his end game was to kill him or let him go. Uh, lastly, Copenhaver was arrested a week later in the Los Angeles suburb of Simi Valley and was returned to Nevada uh, after it was found that Mac fled the home and ran bleeding to the neighbor's home was when Copenhaver went to the kitchen to fetch a knife and she also suffered fractured high socket leg injuries and a lacerated liver. Um, mm. Graphic, it's very graphic. I should have at least given some kind of warning. I mean, there's no pictures to show for this, unfortunately. I'm sure the internet would love that because that's pretty much how anything gets circulated nowadays. Yeah. Um, if there's a video, War Machine would be known as public enemy number one, but I don't think enough people are actually covering what led to War Machine doing this. Some obviously some mental health problems. Roid rage is what they actually pinned a lot of this as part of the problem. A lot of steroids, a lot of substance abuse, these type of things. On top of the thing of your, we get it, man. You're a, a UFC fighter, you're a fighter. So yeah. that's not gonna help. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to bring up really quick, which is an important thing. This has been covered on the main show quite a lot, and I usually bring up this point when I'm on a case where, when I'm talking about a case, whether it's domestic violence, sexual abuse, or anything like that. Um, and the prosecutors, uh, Bluth and Stevens, basically said that it, it was an important, it was an important day for Miss McIndy was that the jury believed her in regards to previous conduct that she had never reported. Um, what that says to domestic violence victims is that even if you don't report it right away, a jury can still believe you. That is crucially important to highlight here because domestic violence and sexual assault is two of the most underreported crimes uh, in America today. And especially when the perpetrator is someone that they know. Um, and and it, of course, there's, there's progress being made, the like statute of limitations is being removed, specifically in California and other states, so that there is no time limit there, basically, to, to say that, oh, because you were raped 20 years ago, it doesn't matter today, you know, it's, it's an absurdity. But it is important to highlight that because there are so many victims out there that are petrified 
of not being believed. Um, and, and I feel like and at times everyone goes, oh, but there's people who uh, just look to try and use this and, and, and they're telling lies, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm afraid my mind doesn't work that way. I can't just look at those one-off instances that do happen as a means to try and uh, push that as a narrative. No, there's a lot of people out there that are petrified to speak out on instances like this. And when it's, uh, it's a notable case like this, it's important to highlight that, that there was... It wasn't just the attack that he was uh, clearly guilty of, uh, and there was a, a lot of evidence to showcase it. It was important to highlight how long this has been going on, mm -hmm. because it wasn't just a one-off instance. Because that is probably a, something that they would have pushed if they hadn't, what, if they hadn't been able to convince the jury that this is an on, was an ongoing thing. They could have been like, "Oh, it was a one-off instance. He had right rage in this example, and then maybe he had would get a, a more lenient um, uh, verdict." But no, he was rightfully so convicted guilty. It's a good uh, uh, case, I think, being put forward to, to showcase how uh, harsh the law can be, not harsh, how right the law can be when it comes down to a despicable scumbag like this, who, as you mentioned, I think part a lot of it has to be highlighted that, yes, he's a UFC fighter, and he used that to his advantage a lot of the time. Yes, he that's used what's it, scary about uh, it, yeah. um, And he has the ability to kill people. Mm -hmm. He has the ability to, to... That's why it's taught from such an early age that when you learn mixed martial arts or anything like that, it's to defend yourself. It's not to use to intimidate someone or, or to, to put you ahead of someone that. and be superior. And he clearly used it as that. I mean, it's a, it is, it's a case, it's a real downer when you read through all the details, but thankfully justice was done and this guy will be behind bars for hopefully, the rest of his life. Hopefully the rest of his life, I would hope that is the case. Mm. Um, in addition to, to, to that, Francis, the, the justice system in America is not the most clear. Mm -hmm. There have been times where a lot of people, I think, and it's led to riots, it's led to uh, uh, more injustices in the country. But comparatively, it does stand up against most other places. So I'm at least thrilled to see it work in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's likely going to work against, as it should, Aaron Hernandez, who is also on trial, another high-profile athlete. The Patriots turned into murdered two people. So, uh, I, this is weird to say, you have to celebrate when justice is served, uh, even though it's them just doing their job. Yeah. It's how it's supposed to work. Because there's been too many injustices, but it just gives you a little bit more faith. A little bit more faith. Believe in the system, even though the system at times can be corrupt and annoying. I mean, we talked about the, the, the Bruno de Souza case, the yeah. goalkeeper who was signed to a club. I would hope to believe that in, the, in America, there is no chance that a person who should be serving a life sentence gets out after three years yeah. and then goes and signs for the Chicago Five. Like, yeah, well, it, yeah. And, and it's, it's really important to highlight uh, this because it is a notable case and people know about it. I yeah, mean, it's a high profile athlete. And athlete. you got to put it right there next to, um, it's a more severe case, but it's still categorically in a similar bracket as uh, Josh Brown of... Um, the, the New York Giants, the kicker who was domestically abusing his wife, yes. but that was a case that was deemed not as important enough specifically for the Giants to cut that athlete. And it right. was demeaning towards the woman, even more so than she was already being demeaned. So I think that it's important to highlight that this is a, uh, this is a, a broader case that more people are, are aware of. And this guy's status didn't come in handy, basically, to try and protect him. His status was even used further against him. You pay the penalty for a horrendous crime and uh, with every despicable, lenient um, uh, verdict that comes out, you got to highlight one like this that is uh, the, the law being done just right. Because it's, with every sexual assault case like this and domestic violence case, there's one like Brock Turner, where he's given the most lenient um, right, uh, that's why. Case that's forward, why I'm, so. I just want some, some. Change. Yeah, exactly. Because it's it's important some to highlight that sometimes some justice faith. can be served, and you got to. I know it's hard to have faith in the judicial system, but at times it does do its job. What does like uh, what does Jinx say? Justice. Justice. <laughs> Justice was just. served in this example. So may he rot in jail. I just yeah, I'm not gonna say comment below. I don't know what you'd say. Yeah. Leave all your butt sex comments in the <laughs> comment section below. <laughs>